Eric Darling, back again, <clears throat> uh, still with Darling Data, at least for the time being, who knows, maybe I'll be with MongoDB in six months, see what happens, just kidding, I've heard it's not a real database, despite all their best efforts, <clears throat> just kidding, my dear friend Joe Sack uh, works at MongoDB, and I would never besmirch the product he works for, because I did enough of that when he worked at Microsoft. <laughs> he worked for, worked on SQL Server. Uh, so in <clears throat> this video, what I would like to talk about is uh, some different ways you can use Quickie Store if you uh, need to put the data into something like maybe Excel, <clears throat> or if you run into problems with SP uh, Quickie Store. So again, all of this stuff is detailed uh, under the help parameter. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit, we're going to be dealing with things sort of towards the end um, <clears throat> around formatting output, debugging issues, and troubleshooting performance. So uh, what we get if we, uh, if we run query store, so SP, sorry, if we run SP Quickie Store by default, normally, without any interventions whatsoever, you're going to see something startling <clears throat> and magnificent. <clears throat> now, the people who create and uh, work on SQL Server Management Studio cared about you in the least, they would put commas into numbers. Because when you put commas in numbers, you can very easily judge their scale when they get really large. And that can be pretty important if you're the type of person who deals with big problems. So <clears throat> let's scroll over to the right a little bit. And let me start showing you some numbers with commas in them. Starting here with weight stats, we can see that there were 186,915 milliseconds of parallelism weights in this query very easily. If this were all smushed together, it might be a little bit harder. This will happen whenever a query breaks the thousand, or sorry, whenever a number breaks the thousand mark. <clears throat> you can see all that in here. Where things are in the thousands, we have a comma, so we can see that very easily. Where things are under a th the thousand mark, uh, we don't need a comma, because there's no such thing as three comma 49, unless you're dealing with weird currency issues. But we are not. We don't talk about query cost, because query cost is a meme, and query cost should be ignored the fullest extent of the law. So, <clears throat> scrolling over a little bit further, we have uh, lovely, lovely commas in all of these columns so that we can see exactly what kind of numbers we're dealing with very easily. Right over here, this logical reads, look at this, 1.1 million logical read, very easy to tell what that is. Now, I'm going to tell you something about milliseconds. It's gonna, it's gonna bake your noodle. If you chop off the last three digits, that's how many seconds it was. Pretty impressive, huh? Average duration, 24 seconds. Total duration, 48 seconds, because there were two executions. Pretty sweet. <clears throat> so, uh, while we wait for the lovely, hardworking, intelligent people who uh, keep SSMS afloat for us to put commas into numbers, SP Quickie stores out there in the world doing it for you. You're welcome. All of you are welcome. Now, <clears throat> let's say you run into a problem with SP Quickie store. Let's say you run into some issue uh, executing it and you get an error and you want to figure out what's going on. A great way to do that is to use the debug parameter. So if we use the debug parameter, uh, up front we're going to get a bunch of stuff. We are going to get all of the parameter values that were passed in to the store procedure. Right? We're gonna sh it's going to show us every the, what the starting value was for every parameter. It's going to show us what the, de the, the declared variables were set to inside of the store procedure. <coughs> Uh, which is, can be very helpful for figuring out uh, if anything got set incorrectly along the way. Right? Lots of good stuff in here. Lots of helpful, 
useful things in here. And then if we go down a little bit further, we're going to get the contents of all of the temporary tables that were used uh, to uh, filter, join, get data out of our query store DMV. So <clears throat> this distinct plans table is the one that drives most of what we pick up out of query store. Um, I use a lot of temp tables in this store procedure because uh, I found that just naturally quer querying the query store DMVs directly uh, led to uh, a lot of performance issues. I can still run into performance issues querying them in this way, but I run into far fewer of them. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you something here. There is almost nothing more embarrassing than talking a client into turning on query store because it's nice, lightweight, almost no overhead. You won't even notice it. <clears throat> and then you open up query store and like the first three queries you see in it are is query store querying itself to populate the query store GUI. It's a, it's, 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 it's real tough. <laughs> it's a real egg on face moment. So uh, if we scroll down, we're going to see all of the temp tables that got used. Uh, maintenance plans is what I use to screen out, um, you know, uh, non-query activity that can be harsh on a server. You know, cr create table, alter table, or not, not really create table, but like alter table, uh, index maintenance, stats maintenance, stuff like that. I use that to filter out stuff here. <coughs> um, I use this to um, figure out what the query store options are for a database. Uh, this is sort of the raw query store data uh, or some of the raw, raw data that I you know, output and format in different ways um, and, and other result sets, uh, you know, just, you know, sort of like how each temp table was populated along the way. So there's lots of useful stuff in here to figure out, you know, like, like, well, I, I, this should have been in there. Why wasn't it in there? You can kind of track down and figure out uh, why things didn't end up where they should have or why, you, why you're seeing what you're seeing in the results. <clears throat> That's the first part of it. The second part of it, over in the Messages tab, prints out every single query that gets run by Dynamic SQL. It'll print it out here. Um, there, before each one of these queries is a number. This number signifies the number of characters in the query. So <clears throat> if you see something that is, uh, you know, cut off, or you see something that uh, you know may have been some uh, dynamic SQL that did not uh, concatenate cleanly. Perhaps there was some implicit conversion that happened that like caused the string to truncate. This is a good way to troubleshoot some of that stuff. There isn't a lot of terribly long dynamic SQL in in SP Quickie Store, but you know there was enough for me to care about um, exactly uh, what I, what was going on in here. So like this is like. 3,000, 2,800 characters, and this is the query that got executed in there, and this is all the stuff that it did. And, <clears throat> and this can also be very useful because if you hit an error, uh, it will tell you which query threw the error, and then you can rerun that query to see if, um, see if you can reproduce it, see if you can figure out exactly what's going on. That's what I do with a lot of this stuff when I'm, when I'm working with, uh, when I'm trying to debug things. Um, a lot of this was in here just during development, just to make things easy, but I kept the debug thing in because, you know, if you run into anything while you're using it, you know, it should, I want to make it easy to troubleshoot for you. So if you go ahead and open up an issue for me in GitHub, you can tell me exactly where the problem is, what you ran into, and we can, uh, I can try to help you fix uh, all of that stuff or I can help me fix all of the stuff that I need to fix in my query. So good stuff there. Um, <clears throat> some of these, because of the way I print things out, like some of the strings are quite long and they don't print in one thing. Um, print is a little more forgiving than raise error. Raise error has a bigger cutoff. So you might see some points where the query text is not exactly the way it should be. Um, that's not me being bad at my job. <clears throat> that's just me not having any control over how print uh, sticks things into the messages tab. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a, that's a good way to troubleshoot if you run into uh, any issues with SP Quickie Store. If you start running into performance issues, it, you can use the troubleshoot performance parameter, and this will do some interesting stuff. So if we say troubleshoot performance, the first set of output <clears throat> is going to be uh, every query that runs that hits the query store DMVs 
and the and the query and the actual execution plan for that query. So uh, that's all this section in here. I'm going to talk about what's in there in a second. But you can see there's a whole bunch of queries in here. This thing finished in zero seconds because you know I can use temp tables and the GUI can't, I guess. But <laughs> anyway, uh, what comes out of here is kind of cool. Uh, so you, there's a pair for just about every line here. Uh, we'll get a query plan back that'll show us uh, exactly what the query was, what the execution plan was. Uh, I mean, this this all finished in zero everything seconds, so we don't need to worry about this one. <clears throat> so we have that, which is cool. But then we'll also have um, also have for every query that that ran and produced a plan this information, which is very very useful we have how long it took uh, we have what the current activity is so we can control an f for this in the script and then we have the query that executed so that we can look at it and say hmm <clears throat> maybe, maybe maybe i could have done better here i don't know hmm. maybe i could maybe i couldn't i just don't know it's impossible to tell pretty sweet huh all right so and you'll get that for every query that executes and you know you'll see Again, the query information about how long it ran for, how long the dynamic SQL was. So uh, you see some of this. Some of this information is a little repetitive, but uh, it is all very useful when trying to figure out <coughs> if there's a performance issue with one of these queries that is fixable. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of times uh, querying these DMVs, especially on um, very busy, very active servers where or query, uh, servers with a lot of query store data in them where this thing can slow down a little bit because there are just some things that uh that do not uh perform well on those types of servers um specific some uh, you know specifically hitting uh some of these uh uh some of these table valued functions that are that sort of are masked by the dynamic management views a lot of the times trying to get stuff out of there like you can't just filter it directly like you can't push predicates to some of these query table valued functions directly you end up with like you know scanning a whole lot of rows <clears throat> and then filtering stuff out later that's what this kind of combo is showing you and does it kind of give you an give you an idea of the kind of stuff that gets filtered in here sometimes it's not even a predicate that i pass in Sometimes it's just something like this where I, like I didn't I didn't ask for that. I didn't I didn't ask for this. This is just part of the built in view definitions or the table valued function definition. So uh, all good stuff to um, <clears throat> be aware of all good stuff to try and help you if you run into performance issues while using SP Quickie Store to query the query store DMVs. Uh, if you find anything in here that you think, uh, you know, you can, you can uh, show me and uh, is something that is fixable by me, I'd love to look. But a lot of the times it is background stuff that I just can't do much about. Anyway, uh, I think that's probably good for this one. Uh, again, formatting output. Um, if, you, if you want to... Uh, <laughs> You know what, I don't think I ever talked about what happens if you put the format to zero. Uh, it takes the commas out. So if you need to like paste this into Excel or something, you can turn format output off and get the numbers without commas. So um, yeah, uh, there was that. Uh, <laughs> I got so excited about debugging, I forgot to tell you that. So anyway, uh, that's my video. Uh, I, do, I do hope you enjoyed yourselves. I do hope that you learned something. I do hope that you will like and subscribe to my cough-free channel. <clears throat> not not throat clearing free channel because there's still pollen in the air and um, my face feels like a brick but that's okay do it all for you anyway uh thank you for watching uh take care of yourselves or else or else you won't be around to watch more videos from me and what would be the point of life if you were dead